king of the hill. The old man stood on the hillside looking down upon wide open field of grass and a rainbow of flowers. His eyes focused on a single form, set apart from the green by a distinctly dull grey long coat that flapped in the wind and swayed in rhythm with the flora. It wasn't the first time the old man had seen the interloper, and he had a feeling in his bones that it would not be the last. Steadily the figure wandered off into the distance, and only when he dropped behind the horizon did the old man relent his attentive stare. The hill was the old man's home and he had no interest in intruders stomping across the adjacent fields. He held his rifle in his work-worn hands and trekked back to his cabin at the top of the hill. He was alone up there, and that's the way he liked it. Every morning he woke to the sounds of birds, and his only companions were his dog's whistle and wisdom, twin retrievers loyal to the core to their human friend. They went everywhere together, and they scampered up the hill with the old man. Nothing mattered but that hill. The rest of the world was no man's land as far as he was concerned, and the only thing between him and it was that lush green field with its kaleidoscopic flowers. He loved the land as much as any man could love it. He wouldn't allow anyone to disturb his peace. The day spent, and the sun drifted behind the trees as darkness fell. The old man and his dog sat by the fireplace enjoying the quiet. He sipped coffee from a mug in his rocking chair, and they snoozed by his feet. This was heaven by anyone's measure, the man muttered to himself frequently. Indeed, muttering to himself was about the only communication he had with anyone other than his dogs. It didn't matter. He had his home and his hearth and his hounds. What more could a man ask for, what more indeed? Night crawled on, and the crackling of the fire soothed the man into a reverie. He wasn't prone to fall asleep while in his chair, but that night his lids drooped, heavy from some unnatural influence he was sure of it. The waking world drifted away, and all that was left was darkness and silence. The old man's mind drifted through endless abysmal dreamscape. He couldn't move or speak, but he could think, and a simple repetitive thought ran through his mind, I am dead. That's when he felt a hand on his shoulder. It sent a chill through him. He wanted to react, but the palpable shadows that surrounded him wouldn't allow it. Their relentless smother became unbearable. His heart fluttering, he forced himself to move his lips and pass air through them, managing to utter a simple question. Who's there? The silence remained. The hand on the old man's shoulder gave a slight squeeze, and suddenly his heart tightened. The hand released, and the pain eased. The hand squeezed again, only stronger, and his heart seized. He was certain this was the end. This is how it had to be, alone in his cabin, dying of a heart attack in his sleep, the angel of death surely snatching him away by the shoulder. Then the grip eased and the pain ceased. Surrounded by the dark, he had never felt so alone. Then the old man felt a breath on his neck warm and moist. He tried to turn and look but he couldn't. The mass of shadows held him fast in place. Moments of such impotence make one despair, and the old man was no exception, although he had spent his life convincing himself that he was, and now faced with the ubiquitous shadow he knew he was no such thing, down in his core he knew it. His mind cried out to anyone and anything for help. His voice squeaked out a feeble, Please! and fell silent. The darkness was winning. Subscribe and stay tuned for more King of the Hill.